of ourselves. And if you happen to be a mom, be the best mom ever and maintain your sanity while we do it. Nutrition is your new addiction. Hey ladies, I hope you're having a good day. Let's work this nutrition. Go, go on and work it lady. Yeah, that's how you work it lady. It's never know or maybe this is how you get it baby work 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 all right i hope y'all are ready to work it today we're about to work this nutritional health and we are gonna talk about today three popular drinks that increase anxiety okay this is a major one now, there's going to be some new information shared. There might be a few things that you may have heard before if you are like an OG Work It Lady podcaster, okay? Um, but this is good stuff, guys. First of all, who wants to have anxiety? A lot of us do, right? But then on top of it, if we know that there's things that we're doing that are making it worse, who wants to do that, right? Like if there's things that we're drinking, popular drinks, that are increasing our anxiety um, due to biological reasons, well, hey, this is some information we need to go over because who wants to go through that, right? It's not fun having anxiety. Anxiety can be crippling. Um, it can make it so that it's harder for us to deal with life. And over here at Work Lady Podcast, we work our life, okay? We run in our life. Our life ain't running us, if that makes any sense, okay? Like, seriously. So we're going to talk about these three popular drinks today that increase anxiety. Disclaimer, don't be mad at me if one of your favorite drinks shows up on this list. I am only here to help, okay? And together here in our community, we are able to support each other, all right? So let's go ahead and get right into it. First of all, apple juice concentrate now this is one i especially want to talk about for two reasons number one a lot of us like if you're a millennial gen z you probably grew up with large quantities of apple juice okay like in the school lunches if you had school lunch it was like okay we're not giving you water everybody gets an apple juice okay where was the water like in our generation why couldn't we just get water for lunch. Like all I drank at school was apple juice because that's what came with the disgusting school lunch. Water was not an option. So I remember drinking water out of the water fountain. And then in like middle school, high school, we had vending machines. So I would, you know, spend my own money and get water when I should have been packing my own like water from home. That would have been much healthier even than the bottled water. But at least at some point I was aware that I just wanted some simple water. Okay, um, the apple juices are also in, you know, sometimes as moms, we prepare our lunch for our kids when they go off to school and we are hooking them up with the um, apple juice concentrate, apple juice. Now, again, let me like clarify. So I'm talking about apple juice concentrate, apple juice. The reason that that is a problem is because it often has added sugar. Um, it often has other things added to it that kind of aren't the best. So we're not talking about your own homemade apple juice. The only risk with your own homemade apple juice would be just having too much sugar. Um, you know, we're made to like bite into our fruit, not drink them. Um, and that was something that um, was really something that I didn't realize that a lot of us don't like even those of us, you know, sometimes we were over juicing. Um, but different ones that I've had um, on the podcast here, um, Jackie, um, you know, go back and watch the episodes with Jackie and I, um, you know, she's a traveling dietitian. That's the name of her um, business. And she's a certified dietitian. And she, she really helped me to understand that as well as becoming a certified precision nutritional coach really helped me to understand that I was over juicing and drinking too much juice. Um, so this is one 
that I want to focus on again for two reasons. Number one, for us who are now young women that grew up in the age of just give your kid an apple juice, we might be experiencing some adverse health effects now from all the stinking apple juice concentrate that we had in our younger lives. Okay. Um, so that's one thing. Now, the other reason is that a lot of us now um, are mothers ourselves. So I wanted us to talk about this today because we want to stop, you know, things that we're, we learn about. We want to stop them for the next generation. So now we're learning that too much apple juice concentrate really isn't the best. So let's, let's correct that going forward with our um, future generations. Okay. So again, the apple juice concentrate really is not the best. Now, let me give you some facts as to why, as to why, as to why. Okay. So apple juice, again, um, we're talking about the concentrate here. Now, this was something that actually kind of started out um, on a consumer reports. And basically what it says is that the limits set by the FDA announced um, that the amount of inorganic arsenic allowed in apple juice concentrate, which are 10 parts per billion, are still a little too high and could possibly leave children vulnerable to serious health issues, including damage to the brain and the nervous system, which can lead to behavioral problems. So let's correlate. You know me, we got to look for more than one reason to believe something, right? So let's look at this. Let's look at, let's just take us and our peers. We were the generation, again, if you're a millennial or a Gen Z, we were the generation of put a juice box, apple juice box in your kid's lunch or you're gonna get one at school. How have we all fared with that, right? I would say that our generation does have a lot of, you know, behavioral problems, um, you know, anxiety, things like that. So this is how it's, you know, kind of coming into the brain function portion of it. Now, is this the only reason? Absolutely not. Could it be one small reason? Or for some people be like, you know, the tipping block? Perhaps. This is not something completely definitive, but it is something to continue. Now, we go a little bit further. Um, on the National Institutes of Health, there was a um, published study okay that says apple juice concentrate prevents oxidative damage um and cognitive decline so here again is something on a positive light about apple juice so it's not to completely criminalize apple juice to me what i get out of these two um, bits of information is that you don't want to overdo the apple juice and i would say having it two three times a day as a young person is probably too much definitely too much as an older person because we're more prone to developing type 2 diabetes but for our children um it would be too much and then this could be one of the reasons why now at our age you know you might be pre-diabetic or you may already have diabetes um i want to touch on this a little bit further because also I feel like, and this is and this is not to be any kind of way or anything like that, but I feel like apple juice was especially popular in certain portions of the population. Like I feel like some people just got the juice box, you know, in the lunch or had it at school. But I feel like others of us, like apple juice was just like a staple. I'll just go out there on a limb and say for little kids, like apple juice drinking was very popular in most black american households and again i'm saying black american households okay um you know if you were you know west african or something your story might be completely different it's particularly i'm talking about southern black american households or maybe even some um of the northern more city areas this was always in the refrigerator like we just loved it growing up and I think we all thought that we were doing a good thing. That's what's so sad about it is when you're like, oh, I'm gonna give my kids some apple juice. Like that'd be a good thing. And then come to find out probably not the best. So again, if that 
resonates with you, if that sounds familiar, then that's something you might want to think about, or you might still be on apple juice hard. <laughs> you, this might be a time to reconsider and kind of, you know, shrink back a little bit with the apple juice. I will say, I will never forget this one kid that I kind of, we weren't that much of an age different difference, but I did babysit him. And it was like, all oh, this kid would drink was apple juice. That was all the mom ever gave in his backpack. And, you know, does he ha struggle with some different things as an adult in the realm of anxiety um, and behavioral issues? Yes. You know, is it all because of apple juice? Absolutely not. Could it be a small contributing factor might be plausible okay so we do have to remember that we are what we eat um and so if we're overdoing one specific thing it can stack up and lead to some issues so again um the things with the apple juice is number one you're getting naturally occurring sugar and added sugar which is just way too much plus you are getting um some of the other added um things um and maybe even coloring things like that that are added as a part of you know the apple juice concentrate making process so um all things to consider but again i don't want to criminalize apple juice like super hard here like it's not something that i feel like you never can drink apple juice again you know um i definitely wouldn't go that far but just something to consider okay so definitely um give a listen to that advice okay um let me just before i move on um talk about uh something else here regarding the the consumer watch this is something that they're they're watching right now this actually came out um with the fda um consumer uh report i'll say um watching that they're doing right now um actually june 1st of 2023 this year so um basically this consumer reports agency is just calling on the fda to lower arsenic levels some arsenic arsenic is in a lot of things naturally occurring okay arsenic is naturally occurring in plants not because anybody added it um if you want to know more about that listen to my kind of deep dive that i did on b12 supplements and arsenic that will kind of give you some ideas don't go to the area of oh they just putting arsenic in everything and trying to kill us it's not you're able to ingest these things when they're naturally occurring in your fruits and veggies meats and all those things it's just that when you know when you keep combining things and you're compounding it so example let's just take an apple so you know if an apple has a little bit of naturally occurring arsenic in it hey no big deal your body can handle that it was designed to it's when you now take you know 12 apples pound them into juice now you've got all those 12 you know levels of arsenic that were in each one of those apples in one glass then on top of that you add more sugar to that then on top of that you add more you know preservatives and coloring and things like that to it now you have a problem okay so again don't let your mind go too far we're not a cons cons conspiracy purist channel here if something's weird um and i feel like yes there's some malintent somewhere i'm gonna share that but if i feel like based on the research that i do that people just are over exaggerating you know things like they do commonly especially with like arsenic and foods i'm gonna say that that's you know kind of a load of crap as well you know what i mean so anything in life you got to find the balance there's always going to be truth to both sides and you're going to do best if you can figure out what information you need to be balanced and draw the best logical conclusion okay so anyway we're covering three in this episode are y'all ready for the next one girl remember we working it out today don't be mad at me i'm just sharing the information Let's go ahead and work. What is our next one? If you're watching on YouTube, I have some visuals, although they are dragging at the moment, girl. They dragging a little bit. Come on, speed up. All right. Now, don't be mad at me because, you know, I'm not trying to be rude or cause no disrespect, but um, half of y'all, okay? 
need uh to have to some type of uh anonymous meeting for this addiction that half of everybody like has an addiction to now right we're talking about coffee so for y'all coffee addicts out there girl don't be mad at me go to one of your coffee anonymous meetings and work it out there okay because i'm only trying to help you coffee is a major problem major okay so let's talk about again how does this affect brain function okay um so with coffee let's go ahead and share some things about coffee okay national institutes of health again caffeine may have positive actions on the brain it can increase alertness and well-being help concentration improve mood and limit depression however caffeine may disturb sleep and it may raise anxiety in a small subset of particularly sensitive individuals now what we have to ask ourselves is how much coffee is too much and if we are drinking too much coffee what are the effects apa.org for this one caffeine does have its cognitive perks okay you get that little boost you get that little buzz however overuse can cause a range of unpleasant side effects including trouble sleep jitters irritability and gastric dis distress now if you've been watching the channel we understand now at this point that our gut microbiome is actually imperative that it is healthy for our mental health as well okay because your brain is also fed by the nutrients in your gut because your blood feeds your brain right so we have to understand that so why does coffee cause this particular issue well a couple of reasons number one it is a stimulant okay a stimulant always is going to increase your cortisol levels when your cortisol levels are high you tend to be in a worse mood okay also if you are overusing coffee which again most people are having at least one cup a day you might not agree but that's actually too much and the reason that would be too much would be discussed in detail in another episode that i have that talks about um why you know women shouldn't drink coffee please excuse me because i forgot the actual name of the episode just search through the podcast and listen to the ones that i do on coffee and you will understand why um, but then another thing with it is coffee also causes um, a lot of extra work for your liver because coffee beans are burned, right? So they're carcinogenic. You're burning the coffee beans and then you're brewing it, basically getting the water, you know, putting water with the burned beans. And that liquid is now, you know, what you drink as coffee, right? You're drinking a carcinogenic drink you're drinking a carcinogenic drink that is what is going into your intestines that's what's going into your liver and if your liver has too much to do that also affects how many things it can pull out of your blood system right and then your brain does not get the quality of blood that it needs to function right it also can even have these neurological problems. Okay. Neurotoxicity. Neurotoxicity, not plasticity, where your brain is making new connections, but neurotoxicity. All right. This was actually a published, this one was an interesting read on sciencedirect.com. Um, and basically it says um, those who are exposed to high doses of caffeine um, have been observed. Um, it's been observed that in their cerebral, cerebral granular cells, they basically have these buildups of neurotoxicity. So toxins on the brain um, in layman's terms. Um, this 
though, did have some other interesting things. So evidence demonstrates that chronic caffeine exposure primarily through consumption of coffee leads to increased alertness and anxiety. So you like on high alert all the time. <sighs> and how do that is that not how we feel when we have anxiety? We're tense. We're on edge. <sighs> so that fake high that you get, the coffee addicts, it's damaging. Okay. Other studies using molecular techni techniques have reported that caffeine exhibited neuroprotective effects, okay, as we talked about. Um, however, um, caffeine interacts with the dopamine genetic system, which leads to um, depression and attention deficit, def deficit hyperactivity. I cannot speak to God today, guys. I am exhausted, okay? <laughs> Maybe I need some coffee to perk me up. No, thank you. I will take tea, okay? Although caffeine and teas can can also, you know, do that. You know, it's you have to drink more of it to get those effects. Um, but still, you know, so I'm going to be fair. I like to play fair, okay? I'm not just bashing uh, the coffee crazies, okay? So again, you know, this can lead to depression, attention deficit, Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, ADHD. So while y'all are out here giving your 12 and 13-year-olds coffee and wondering why they have ADHD, it's too much of a stimulant for the brain. If you want to stimulate the brain, read a book, drink some water and eat an apple. Then you're going to get what you need in a natural way, okay? Additionally, caffeine has been found to suppress the inability inhibitory activity and modulate GABA receptors. Okay, studies have also found that modulating these neurotransmitters, neurotransmitters leads to neurobehavioral effects. All right. Uh, so again, guys, just be careful with the coffee. Um, again, caffeine and neurotransmitters, um, you know, they have a lot of studies on this um, going back all the way to 2022. There's some particular studies of interest um, in 2013 and 2015 um, on caffeine and the neuro and its effects on neurological behavior. Um, again, let's I'll just pop a little bit on this one because you know I can really get into this but here's one other study um the 2018 that I'm talking about caffeine induces neuroprotective uh okay no that's not the one okay all right so we're good we're good here okay um so again, this one is something that is hard to digest. I know I just beat up on the coffee drinkers a whole lot here, but it is coming from a place of love. So it's not just the neurological defect effects, but also don't forget about its effect on your gut. It is going to deplete a lot of your um, natural, naturally occurring healthy bacteria in your gut, um, which is not good. Um, now, here was one that was an interesting one. This is 2023, February. Caffeine can aggravate the symptoms of brain fog, um, which is kind of counterproductive, right? <laughs> um, you know, yeah, I just don't know what to say. Like, I get, I think I'm so like, I don't know, I'm coming from just, I don't even know what else to say on this because when I try to share this with people, like in person, people go literally nuts. Like they get so mad. Like, and it go, usually the conversation goes something like this. Oh, hey, you want some coffee? Oh no, I'm good. No, thanks. Oh no, this is some really good coffee, girl. You got to try this when I got this here. Oh, thank you so much. I don't drink coffee. What? You don't drink coffee? Child, what's wrong with you? And I'm just like, what's wrong with you? Why do you drink it? Do you know? Healthiersteps.com. Can quitting coffee improve mental health? Caffeine is a stimulant, which means it has mood altering effects. If you're struggling with anxiety, 
is it really what you want to add to your plate? Something that is going to alter your mood. I'm just going to let you think about that. It is going to increase your serotonin levels, but it's also going to send you coming, crashing down. Just think about it. So again, I'm not saying that coffee causes anxiety, but it can increase it because of these little micro effects, right? The biological effects. GoodRx.com. Drinking coffee can make anxiety symptoms worse. Research shows that in people with panic disorder, caffeine consumption raises the risk of having a panic attack and increases levels of anxiety. July 2022. More research is being done on this now. I say the past five years, um, more and more people are looking at coffee as a problem, especially as a woman. You know, Breast cancer is something that we all have to be thinking about as well. That's a whole nother thing. But all of this, drinking excessive amounts of coffee ain't going to do nothing for you, girl. But take money out of your pocketbook because them Starbucks drinks are cheap, are not cheap. They're very expensive. And it's going to increase your risk. Not give you, but increase your risk of developing different types of cancer, mood disorders, things like that. Why bother? You know what I'm saying? Why bother? Okay. All right. So again, I said I was done beating up on a coffee drinker, but I wasn't, but now I am. I promise. <laughs> okay. Oh, I love y'all. That's why I'm saying this. I love y'all for crying out loud. All right, moving on, moving on. Now let's get to the last one here. We're going to talk about, I'm going to beat up on y'all a little bit too. And this is all stuff that I was guilty of too, guys. These are lifestyle changes that I had to make. I used to drink coffee. I used to drink down apple juice all the time. Like Eve in barbershop, a grown woman drinking apple juice like all day. Like, you know, I get it. I used to drink coffee. And don't even talk about putting it in the toxic cup. Now you got hot liquid in a toxic cup, which is transferring the toxins from the cup into the drink. Okay, I said I was done beating up on y'all. I'm really done this time for real, okay? Y'all just drop me a hate comment in the comments and keep it moving if you mad. That's all you got to do, okay? Um, all right, moving along to our third drink here. Okay. Soda pop. Now, this might be another one that um you might still be on. Might still be addicted to. I remember, you know, some people, like, back in the day when I used to just, like, randomly have a, a Popeye's chicken addiction. I used to be like, man, that Popeye's chicken with a Coke. <laughs> That's the bomb right there. Okay. Yep, it's the bomb, quite literally, because it's going to give you a bomb of problems, okay? Explosive diarrhea for one. Now, moving on off of that. Soda is another big problem, okay? It's a problem. It's an issue. It's messing you up, girl. So how does it mess up the cognitive function? How does it increase our anxiety okay anxiety all right soda this was an interesting study the framington heart study has shown through its data that people who are more who more frequently consume sugary beverages such as sodas and fruit juices we already mentioned that apple juice are more likely to have poor memory smaller overall brain volumes and smaller hippocampal volumes. So we're actually talking about a smaller brain. 
And I'd argue that the effects with coffee would be the same. I know I said I was done with coffee. Okay, I digress. But just saying. Now, who wants to have that happen? I want a big old brain that can have all my blood pumping through it and stuff. I don't want my brain shriveling up and dying. That sucks. Sucks. All right. So again, we're not saying that this is going to cause mental health issues, but it is a contributing factor for most. Okay. A study in Australia found that those who consume 16 ounces of soda per day were 60% more likely to have depression, stress-related problems, and even suicidal thoughts. Now, when I share a study like this or any study, I ask myself, you know, what kind of people mostly drink sodas or mostly drink coffee or whatever, okay? With the sodas, again, you're going to have higher um, numbers of people in certain demographics, right? Usually all of us that are in the minority category um, are going to fall into this Blacks and Latinos more so, okay? But it's, it does not always have to be Blacks and Latinos. Even those who are in a so, certain social... I'm done. Why can't I talk today? Even some of those of us who are in a certain social economic bracket. We're overworked. We're tired. We just want to have a nice tasty drink to sit down to. That's all. But again, the problem is it's damaging. Okay. So that's the thing. A lot of these things are convenient feel goods. And when you're depressed and you know you're in a situation where you know you don't have enough money to go around, you got more mouths to feed than you do income. You know what I mean? You're just like, ah, oh, it's all good. Just have this soda. Oh, let's have Coke with this. And, you know, Mountain Dew, I need energy. You're just doing stuff to survive. So it's not, I'm never pointing the finger at people like in a negative way. I'm bringing light on it because when you are economically repressed, you are more likely to look for areas in the things you eat in the entertainment that you seek out that are fun and freeing because your life is not fun and free. So having a quick, tasty soda feels good to a stressed out single mom of four who has to work all these jobs. She just wants to kick her feet up at the end of the day and enjoy a tasty drink. It's not her fault. You understand? Like it's, it's, it's a whole like thing. Okay. So again, um, we just have to be careful, okay? Drinking the sugary sodas also increases your risk of diabetes by 26%. I would even argue more than that nowadays, okay? Um, really, really a problem, okay? All right, let's go on. This one was just from another kind of random.com, but still had some good information. Um, this particular study, it was shown that participants who consumed at least one artificially sweetened beverage a day, soda, um, were almost three times as likely to either have dementia or a stroke compared to their counterparts who drank less than one of those beverages a week. That was a January 2020 study. Okay, that's from Delone Memory Care. All right. UCLA health.org, a great resource. Okay. UCLA is a great institution for health, all health related things. All right. What do they got to say? Sugary beverages like soda are linked to a long list of adverse health effects, starting with obesity, poor blood sugar control, and diabetes. Recent studies have found an association with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and heart disease. All right. Um, so again, it's really a problem. All right. So these are the effects. And 
the reason that soda is so bad is because of the level of artificial sweetener, added sugar, and coloring and preservative agents. And you tend to drink a lot of it. Some people don't drink water and just drink soda. So that's when it becomes a problem. Hey, sometimes when I want to go out and have a great time, I may have a rum and Coke. What? Once every six months or more? You know, you don't have to be that extreme. You could have a rum and Coke once a month or something. That's fine. But when you're drinking Coke every single day, three times a day, and that's all you drink, you're going to start to have some cognitive decline. Okay. And that's why it's so hard when you get to the point of being really sick. It's hard to get to a healthier weight and a healthier place in life because you've got all these other factors working against you now. You've got your brain sapped and feeling sluggish and tired. You've got poor cognitive function. So then your reasoning reasoning ability is lower to help you make these decisions, you know, to change your life and get your health back on track. So it's really, really a problem. Um, again, these are the effects, guys, and those are the reasons for for the effects. Okay. Um, all right. Now let's talk about some other things. Okay. Um, we talked, you know, about three things in this video. We first talked about um, apple juice. Then we talked about coffee. Now we just talked about soda and how these three popular drinks are jacking us up, girl. They jacking you up. I would challenge you to eliminate all three. Just stop drinking them. You know, that's not easy to do. Limit yourself to, you know, one cup of coffee every six months. <laughs> Go stream extreme with it or one rum and coke every six months. Don't completely just throw it out. But really ask yourself, do I really need this? Do I want all these other things that I have going on stacking up? Can I remove these few things and have the health benefits? Why not, right? Why not? So let's try it. Now, what can we do? Let's say you've been pounding. Let's say you've been hitting all three. You addicted to soda. You are addicted to, um, you know, Coke and apple juice. You just been on all three for about 15 years straight. What do you do? The antidote. Replace these things with water immediately. Immediately. Um, try to just start drinking water. I'm going to tell you my trick. I also drink water because I'm a little bit of a cheapskate. I don't want to actually pay for a drink when I go out and order food. I'm like, I will just have a grilled chicken sandwich with tomato and grilled peppers with a side of faucet water, please. I'm good. I don't need a Coke. I just saved myself at least $2. And then now I've gotten even cheaper with mine. I fill my water thing up before I leave the house. So, you know, when I go out for my service days, you know, whatever it is that I'm doing, I fill up my water before I leave the house so I don't have to go out and buy bottled water. Now, there are some days that you're going to forget. But, you know, if you pick up a bottle of water, no biggie. But overall, it does save you money. Think about if you go out every single day for work, service, whatever, right? And then you buying bottled water every day at $2. That adds up. That would add up to, you know, a new dress at the end of the month. I'd rather have a, a cute, reasonably priced dress to wear at the end of the month than a bunch of bottles of water that I could have bought my own water from the house. We need to have a discussion at some point on like tap water versus bottled water, which is better and why. If you're interested in that conversation, definitely drop me a line somewhere um, here on the episode, on podcast or on YouTube, or you could even, you know, DM me um, on Instagram as well. And we'll talk about that. Um, but you'll be surprised how quickly your body can turn around when you eliminate these drinks and then just start drinking water. 
you will immediately notice a change in your weight. You're going to have a lot more energy. And remember, we all, to some degree, have anxiety. You are going to have a lot less anxiety if you get rid of these drinks and drink water. Water actually helps your brain and your cognitive function, right? Because your brain is sitting in what? Water. It's not sitting in Coke, okay? Your blood needs what? Water. Your liver needs what? Water. So just by increasing your water intake, you are going to get toxins out of your body that interfere with those neurotransmitters in your brain, and you're going to have faster cognitive function. That means when people talk to you, instead of, wait, huh, what? Can you tell me that again? I'm not understanding what you're saying. It's going to be, oh, okay, sure, I got that. Let me get on it. That's the difference with good cognitive function. You ever talk to somebody and you have to explain something like six, seven times? They probably hopped up on coffee and soda. That's what happens. You have poor, it takes you longer to understand words that people say to you when you don't have good cognitive function. But this right here can be changed and turn around pretty quickly just by drinking water. Okay. All right, ladies, as always, you know, we get in here, we do work. We did some work today. Okay. If you're not already, give me a follow on Instagram where you'll get like updates of, you know, when I'm going live, live sessions are always fun. Okay. Um, and updates, things like that. All right. And of course, those of you in my private group on Instagram, I love you guys so much. You guys are the real ones. And yes, love you, love you. Um, and also please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Um, if you feel like this is good information that can help somebody, please give it a share somewhere. Like it. Um, turn on your bell notification. Anything else that I can say please do it because we need to see more things like this in the algorithm, not just me, other people who are creating good content too that is focused on health. You know, instead of engaging in all of the, the crazy stuff happening in the world and all the whack conspiracy theories and, you know, weird stuff, this is just some good information to help us live better lives, okay? Let's talk about these things. All right, ladies, that is it for today. I hope you have enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Best mom ever and maintain your sanity while we do it. Nutrition is your new addiction.